a tie match at the drop. Double oh. gen pop to avoid the deadlock. Oh. They do go down. There is a haste status effect. They do have to be careful here. The hatch is going to spawn momentarily. Deadheart could get them the distance to get it too. Smart play on the ace. Oh my god, getting shot through the window. No longer have distortion, and they are gonna teleport here. I think they get there in time. <gasps> yes, oh, oh, the yes. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Oh. This is that is disappointing. This is be a four man out. Because yeah, but they will be able to oh, block yeah. this. <laughs> Yo, know, getting caught on that. Dude. Ace coming with the oh, body block god. though. Oh, they oh. were here. Hey, what is up, guys? It's Guilt Spire here, and welcome back to champions of the fog now some of you might be noticing that uh i don't have a green screen and my camera looks different yeah um i i may have required a kitten and yes i'll pay the cat tax when they're not sleeping but that is why but before going into too much more explanation we are jumping right on in and we are seeing bloody charms kill against petroleum survivor team and they have brought the plague and this is going to be a very interesting match. Two very strong teams indeed. And Plague with a very high pick rate, so I've seen. And Plague, already seeing scratch marks right off the bat here. Also wanted to mention, this could be one of the last few games that we see with the current meta of perks. Things are about to be shaken up soon, especially with the likes of Corrupt Intervention, as we do see that being here used here today. 30 seconds already passing pretty quick. Plague trying to get some early infections, unable to do so though. However, they are going up on the tail, not drinking their Corrupt Purge, instead trying to find a survivor back here. They saw the scratch marks, they do find the Atom, and we do see an infection on the Claudette too. So, bit of a slow start here. No real injuries or downs for the Plague. About a minute and a half into this match. Plague, though, taking a swing, getting hit onto Adam. There we go. It has started. And looks like Plague will commit to this chase, trying desperately to get them infected. As we do see Claudette get infected, meaning that she has been sitting on the gen this entire time. Nia infected as well. At least two survivors on a gen, if not on the same gen in fact and there is adam now officially infected but plague haven't break that pallet before able to do much adam going forward the pallet will get it in time but a fake i didn't hear the pallet go down oh it did though never mind and we will see that first gen pop it off right there and so far these survivors playing very very well Honestly, I'm starting to think that the Plague needs to drop this chase. They have taken a lot of resources from these survivors, which is great. However, unable to get this down, they are not doing much to slow these survivors down, especially eating that pallet right there. And Adam, the cheeky blind attempt, will not get it in time. Uh, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think the Plague is just out for blood and wants the Adam dead for whatever reason. Adam, seeing that they have nowhere to go, will go to a corner trying to extend a chase as much as possible and will get downed as we do hear another gen popping off in the distance. So far, really amazing play here by the survivor side. Will not be surprised if we hear another one, if not two gens popping off as well. 
But Plague seemingly kind of sticking around near the hook here. I mean, they have them in a really good spot. If there's one thing going for the Plague here, it is the fact that this hook is back in a corner where the Plague can very well guard it. And as they grab their Corrupt Purge, or not, they got distracted. They end up going for the Nancy instead, who is not infected until just now. I mean, that they're going to have to try and infect them before they're able to get to any resources. Unable to do so, though, Adam... Trying to get in the way, unable to do so successfully. Nancy, though, here at the pallet. Just a little bit more resources. A reverse pallet stun. Nancy vaulting and heading toward Shaq. So, really great plays here. But it's about a really good heads up call bringing the Nancy in. The only one not infected for that unhook. I mean, honestly, it's a risky play. If, in instance, Nancy wasn't one with BT, that could have been a very easy tunnel out. But Plague not taking the risk. And we do see Nancy just dropping these pals like they're hot. But Nancy, though, caught out of the corner here. Unless she has something like a life in hand, I don't foresee her getting much of anywhere. And no distance was gained, so that'll be down at the Z-Wall. Z-Wall, of course, being the most powerful tile in the game. And now here will be the second hook of this match. We do see a cleanse happen quite close by. That there was the Adam, I do believe. However, two gens popping off, and if you guys hadn't known already, you definitely do now that there is a Rancor. So we'll see what happens here. Unfortunately for the Plague, that the first chase and down was the Atom. Their second chase and down was the Deliverance, too. So really strong plays here by the Survivor. Just taking everything away from this Plague. And looks like Nancy just going out to the corner. Knowing full well she has no resources available to her. Just is going to hold W, try and waste the Plague's time. I smell a decisive strike incoming. And I wonder if the Plague does too. No, she goes for the instant pick and let's see it. There is no decisive strike. The Plague taking the bait, but no bait to be had. And that'll be the second hook there for the Nancy. However, that there is the last gen completed. Adam, though, in the Plague sights. Once again, there is Raincor. Adam knowing that full and well. And he's going to have to stay away from the Plague's M1. As we do see him coming up to here. Dropping down. Will he gain some distance? That's either bounced and or a life. And Adam going to be taking the Plague to Shaq. Where we have not seen a chase thus far. 99 Exegate over there on the right. I imagine the Plague saw that too, but not much she can do to stop it. She has to commit to this Adam, otherwise she's going to get little to no value. Sees the pallet and trying not to risk it, trying to get a mind game on Adam. Does get it! And that will be the down and the Mori on the Adam. Question is, do survivors have the other exit gate ready to go, or will they be forced to go here? Keep in mind, Plague's uh, Mori here taking a bit of time, and we do not see anyone with those cleanses there on the other Exegate. I can only assume that it is open and ready to go. Scratch marks, though, at the door, and sure enough, that will be the three-man out. Very nicely done by these survivors, and GG well played to both sides. With that being said, we are going to flip sides here. This time, Petroleum on the killing side. And we are going to be back in just a bit. But I did promise you guys a quick cat tack. So everyone, COTF, say hi to Butter, the, the little criminal scum who likes to chew on wires and climb up my leg. So this is uh, the new COTF kitten as they are relegated to the stream room. Isn't that right, buddy? So, with that being said, guys, we are going to be back in just a little bit. But before we do go, as a reminder, you, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors today. So, every ad they watch, all the bits they tip, all the subs that you buy, all go to supporting Chim Fog in our $525 prize pool that these competitors are duking it out for. With that being said, we'll be back in just a bit.
All right, and we are back. This time, Petroleum's Killer versus Bloody Charm Survivor Team. And we are going to be jumping right on in. Question of the day, will it be another plague? We have seen pa plague picked quite a lot, but only time will tell. And thankfully, we will not have to wait long. As far as what the win condition is here, we are going to need to see a pretty much a 2K. A 2K will get the win. But with that being said, we're jumping right on in, and it is the judge, j the jury, the executioner, the pyramid head himself. And yeah, at the end of the day, oh, the goal of Molly here is going to be a 2k for the win. If they're able to accomplish that, that there will secure the win for Petroleum. On the flip side, uh, Blade Charms is going to need to get a three man out with only four hooks. Not impossible, but not unlikely either. So only time will tell. So far, though, Survivor's doing a fantastic job of staying out of line of sight, wasting time for this corrupt intervention. And there it is, the Nancy out of nowhere. And that there will be the first hit of the game as 60 seconds has passed. The second Survivor caught out in the open as well. Pyramid Head faking for the Punishment of the Damned will get the hit on the Nancy. Beautifully done. With the new meta coming out very soon, I actually drop it in the beginning portion of COT Gifts of Season 4. Gonna be really interesting. I'm curious to know what chat's thoughts are on new Corrupt Intervention and if you're gonna be using it in comp. Because if you get it down in that first minute, Corrupt's over, right? So is it worth taking? I'm really curious. I'm gonna be very interested to, interested to see what the rest of the comp community decides regarding Corrupt Intervention as it has been Nothing but a staple this entire time since play came out. But another chase. Pyramid trying to get the hit. Does not get it. Just not far enough. And looks like they will be going for the potential tunnel out on the Nancy. Going back to the hook. It is a little ways off, however. So chances are that they will be able to get the unhook before the Pyramid Head gets there. So far, no sign of these survivors. Pyramid Head trying to identify where. There's the Nancy, though. Pyramid Head going for the tunnel out indeed. And there's the fake. There's them one. And that will be that. Another hit on the Nancy, trying to follow up with the Punishment of the Damned. Not far enough, though, and unable to get the hit. A very cheeky attempt, unfortunately, giving the Nancy a whole lot of distance to maneuver here. Another pallet here for some distance. Unfortunately, though, unable to avoid the Punishment of the Damned. And let's see if there's a decisive strike in the works. Also, though it was at the corner of your screen, you may have noticed a Rancor in play, and that there is a Scourge Hook Pain Resonance Regressing Gen by 15%. Another perk that is going to be edited soon, where it will not give that sort of info as we do approach Season 4 of Champions of Fog. Michaela, though, trying to get this unhook here, knowing that they can't before the grab, trying to bait the Pyramid out into something, we do see another gen popping off and Pyramid Head actually going to be going for the chase, but kind of being a bit indecisive here will end up dropping and just trying to camp out this Nancy to death. To be fair, a really smart play here as if they're able to kill the Nancy and camp out the next survivor, that pretty much will secure them the victory. Nancy, though, hanging on by a thread. Less than 15 seconds left. These survivors need to make a choice, and they need to make a choice quick. I do not see a survivor incoming. No scratch marks, no nothing. Nancy left out the dry and being brought back to the campfire by the entity. Nicely done, and that'll be the first kill there on the Nancy. All the Pyramid Head needs at this point, as I mentioned before, is to down another survivor and get the kill. With Rancor off the table, however, it does mean that they have far fewer resources in regards to perks. 
That means that they are at this point a two per killer of Rancor and Skurchuk, actually Skurchuk Pain Residence and a unknown Rancor, though known, just ain't gonna get much information outside of information at this point. But it looks like they're gonna be dropping the chase on the Kate for whatever reason, opting to go back and check out the gens. Not seeing any progress on these over here. And potentially regretting their decision to drop that chase. They knew where the survivor was, but at this point in time, they are kind of caught out here. However, seen two survivors. There's the Quinton on top of which, who is still injured. That is a huge play, as they will be able to get this down really quickly. On top of which, getting the torment on the Quinton will mean that they can avoid a potential decisive strike after this unhook. These survivors are going to have to play around this torment and potential cage of atonement. If there was a for the people, now is going to be the time to use it. Pyramid Head, though, looking around, trying to find another survivor, does find the Kate, but potentially not going to commit as they're just going to be trying to hold this middle area. Kate trying to bait the Pyramid Head into a chase. Seemingly does successfully do so. I imagine Michaela will go for the unhook shortly. Kate trying to bait out the Punisher of the Damned. Unable to do so, though. And will take the hit before the pallet and re-tormenting themselves for the Killer Instinct. Pyramid Head knowing full and well where they're going. Will they be able to get the hit? Looks like a life will get the Kate some decent distance. And Pyramid Head here, going to be trying to get this down with another Punishment of the Damned. Potentially going to fake it. Does indeed. And Kate, though, getting blocked at the pallet and will get downed. That is now going to be the fifth hook for these survivors. They are going to need to do something quick if they are going to try and get a three-man out. But I think at this point, Pyramid Head is going to camp it out. Or at least was contemplating it, you know. Us killers, we have to contemplate our existence sometimes, and I think that there is exactly what happened. We do, however, see a Michaela sneaking around, trying not to be seen, unable to do so, though. Michaela with Sprint Burst, though, getting away and not hit by the punishment. Then, really good attempt. Michaela, though, doing a great job of reading the situation, knowing what's what. Our Quentin going for the unhook. Pyramid Head going for the long range punishment. Will get the hit on both. There's the borrowed time as well. Getting rid of that, and looks like there will be the tunnel out on the Kate here, as the Pyramid Head has no reason to worry for the Decisive. Unfortunately, though, with the life unable to get the hit over the window, Kate trying to make as much distance as possible, giving her teammate enough time, and looks like Pyramid Head going to fake the punishment. Kate, I don't know if she'll be able to get here in time. She does not, and that there will be the down. Cage Atonement on top of which, if the Pyramid Head knows these spawn locations, they can go straight to the cage and push them around as necessary. However, these survivors are rather close by. Pyramid Head looking around for a survivor here near this gen, unable to find them though. I think they need to go for this cage. This is six hooks, mind you, but there's still three survivors left, and with the Quinton losing their torment, that tells the Pyramid Head everything they need to know. Both Quinton and Kate are right here, Punish the damn prepped and ready, and looks like we're gonna be going for the Quinton instead, and there's the hit. Amazing job here by the Pyramid Head, an amazing heads up play. One big thing to keep in mind is when you have two survivors tormented, when you see one lose it, that means that they have touched the cage and are in the process of uncaging. And with that Rancor, there ain't much left to do here but sit and wait for the Quinton to die. Now, Pyramid Head could go for style points and get some additional points here. Not that it will mean much in the long run. Kate, though, very much caught out in the middle of nowhere. And I do not imagine that they have a decisive strike, so that there will be a minimum of a 2k8 hook, as Pyramid Head will be able to get them to this hook right here. Mind you, there is a no way out, and three stacks worth of it. 
The Pyramid Head has already secured the win. At this point, it is for bragging rights as they are going to attempt to hunt down one of these last two survivors and they find the Quinton. Not worth the most points, but in this case, the points don't matter. And the Pyramid Head is just out for death and destruction. Quinton trying to get somewhere and get somewhere quick. Pyramid Head though, holding them at bay with the punishment of the dam. Fires it off, potentially unable to get the Quinton to a hook here if they do go to the corner, as this hook has been used. And, I mean, at the end of the day right now, doing some quick nodders here in the corner. Let's see if they're able to get to a hook in time. It's going to be quite close. We see that hook there right in front of them. Will they be able to get in there in time is the question and looks like they will if just barely and that will be the 3k here for petroleum securing the win so gg well played to both teams and congratulations to petroleum to move into round number two with a win underneath your belt and blade charms we'll see you later as you'll be moving around number two as well don't forget you can still get your invite to champs of fox season four with a two x and one records and let's take a look real quick there was no for the people i think honestly for the people would have been clutch this game but since there is a killer pool and a choice of three hard to make that decision to play around the potential pyramid head but with that being said, guys, we are going to set up for round number two. In the meanwhile, though, I do want to remind everyone here today that we are partnered with Stream for a Cause. Stream for a Cause is a nonprofit organization based here in the United States. They support a litany of causes from the LGBTQA plus community to uh, the refugees in Ukraine and so much more. So that being said, guys, we'll be back in just a little bit after these ads.